and we're also going to talk about specific meds that I took from UWorld and also from Mark K from this document that I have that kind of talks about the main things that you need to know, a lot of important medications and also a lot of important kind of classes or things that you guys need to know. and welcome back to living life with your favorite nurse all right guys so today is all about pharmacology I found studying for pharmacology um, for the NCLEX was so difficult because there are just so many things out there but what I actually found important is actually kind of knowing the classes when I mean classes not really classes of meds that's important too and we're going to talk about it but also general things about let's say a topic so general things about antibiotics general things about cardiovascular medication, general things about psych. So we're gonna talk about that and we're also gonna talk about specific meds that I took from UWorld and also from Mark K from this document that I have that kind of talks about the main things that you need to know, a lot of important medications and also a lot of important kind of classes or things that you guys need to know. So if you don't have a paper and pen, or unless you want to watch this video a thousand times, get a paper and pen because you'll need it. So again, it's really important to know generally about, let's say, antibiotics or cardiovascular meds so that you kind of know what's normal and what isn't normal. And we're also going to talk about specific medications and things too, and I'll give examples of really important things, at least that I remember on my end class. Right, guys, if I do this video in one part, it will be crazy, crazy long. So today we're going to cover antibiotics cardiovascular meds and diuretics. Next week, we're gonna cover respiratory, diabetic drugs, psych, which is crazy long, and just some little miscellaneous meds that I think you guys need to know. So let's get started. So let's start with antibiotics. You need to remember when someone takes antibiotics, GI symptoms are actually normal. It's to be expected. So if you get a question that, oh, someone is on, let's say, this antibiotic, and they're having diarrhea, would I be concerned? When I was answering questions before, I would be like, oh yeah, no, I need to go check that out. Honestly, it's actually okay to expect frequent bowel movements, um, nausea, diarrhea, and sometimes constipation. The issue is when it's over-exaggerated and let's say someone has been having diarrhea for a week and is now dehydrated. That's when you should be alarmed. But typically, those are actually normal signs and symptoms that you'll see in someone taking antibiotics. So a typical NCLEX question that I've actually seen a lot is them actually asking about allergies. You need to remember when it comes to antibiotics, a lot of people have allergies and sensitivities. So if you ever see a question about, oh, what would you do before administering, let's say, this antibiotic, you might actually not know the antibiotic, but you need to remember when you are giving an antibiotic, you need to make sure that person isn't allergic to it. Think about penicillin. A lot of people have sensitivities and allergies to penicillin, so you're going to have to make sure they're not allergic before you administer that medication. When it comes to med questions as well with antibiotics, it's also important that you make sure that depending on their lab values, they can get this medication. Sometimes when it comes to vancomycin, you're gonna have to actually check their levels before you give vancomycin or during while you're giving the vancomycin. So lab values like your creatinine or your BUN would be important. So don't forget the levels in the question. In regards to antibiotic, another question that I saw a lot is definitely making sure that the patient takes their full course of medication. So this one would be a teaching question. You might not even know the antibiotic, but they'll say this patient is going home on this antibiotic, what would be the most important thing to tell this patient? So take it with orange juice would be an answer. Take it um, at night. Again, you might not even know this antibiotic, but you know if someone goes home on this antibiotic and they stop taking it in one or two days when they're meant to take it for like two weeks, they're at risk of resistance. So you wouldn't want that to happen. So again, you might not know that they need to take it with orange juice. You might not know that the med needs to stay in light, but you know that they are at risk of resistance, so the most important thing would be to tell them is to finish their course of treatment. I've also seen a question like that before. Also, if you can, with antibiotics, definitely try to make sure you know the classes of which antibiotics cause nephrotoxicity, um, autotoxicity, things like that. All right, answering cardiovascular questions. So thrombolytic medications are contraindicated in someone who's having a stroke who has had surgery in the last two months. 
remember that. Also, if they have any bleeding issues, you wouldn't want to give them this medication because they would bleed out. This is also a very, very popular question as well. You need to make sure that you know that you wouldn't give this medication because of those reasons. It is an anticoagulant, which means it's gonna stop clotting. Therefore, the person will continue to bleed. So you need to make sure you would have checked the patient's history or made sure that they haven't had surgery and things like that before you administer this med. So cardiac glycosides, like digoxin, this stimulates myocardial contractility by inhibiting the sodium potassium pump and slows the heart rate. Remember, because these meds are slowing things down, this person would be at risk for bradycardia, weakness, and fatigue. Remember with digoxin, it's possible to become toxic. So early signs of toxicity with digoxin is actually not bradycardia or weakness, it's actually GI symptoms. So in this case, GI symptoms isn't normal like it is for antibiotics. So nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea would be your first sign, and then you would have heart disturbances. Hypokalemia can also cause digoxin toxicity. Remember that. So ACE inhibitors, this causes vasodilation. So all you basically your prills. In a prill, something, something. So this can cause hyperkalemia and hypotension. So remember, you would want to give the right diuretic with this medication. So things to know about nitrates, basically like nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin causes vasodilation and increases blood flow to the heart. So simple rules with this medication that you need to remember that also come up in a lot of questions. So you can give nitro up to three times in 15 minutes. If after three times there's no improvement, you'll need to call 911. Always assess BP before you give nitro because it causes hypotension. Remember, vasodilation, it's opening, so it's gonna drop. So imagine you give someone nitro and their blood pressure is already in the 60s. That will be a problem. But by chance, if it does cause hypotension, be sure to lower the head of the bed. Beta blockers. If you know any beta blockers, which for some reason, they all escape my mind, I'll put their names up. Make sure that this is not given to any asthma patients. The blockers are contraindicated in people with asthma and who are having bradycardia. It causes bronchospasms, so especially with someone with asthma, they won't be able to breathe. So remember to never administer a beta blocker to someone who has asthma. Again, I've seen that in a lot of questions. When you give a beta blocker, if you ever have a question, what would you do? Remember to always assess for wheezing or respiratory distress things like that, all things respiratory. You might not even think about it because it's a heart medication, but you need to think of the rest side of it. Diuretics, another one of my favorites. Major tip for diuretics, they're contraindicated in people taking lithium because it can cause hyponatremia and that will cause lithium toxicity. So just remember that. So thiazide diuretics, they increase sodium and water excretion in a patient. Remember that they're not effective for fast diuresis, like if someone was filled with water and I needed to immediately get it out of them, I wouldn't be using thiazide. Because this med is basically to help take out water and salt and stuff, you would expect that this patient would be peeing a lot, so you would also tell them to not take this med at night. Remember, if they give you this med and you don't even know exactly what it does, but if you know it's a thiazide, you know that it would cause excessive urination, you would tell them to take it in the morning. So that's a question that they could ask. You wouldn't want them to take it at night because they'd have nocturia and they'd be peeing all night, peeing all night, and you don't want that to happen to them. So that's a nursing intervention or a tip that you would tell them. Lube diuretics, so they're potassium wasting diuretics. So basically, if they're wasting potassium, they're kicking potassium out of the body. They inhibit sodium and chloride reabsorption. So remember that because of that, it can kind of throw off your electrolytes. So when it comes to someone on loop diuretics, make sure that you're kind of investigating their electrolytes and you don't want them to have electrolyte imbalances because that will cause other symptoms that you guys know. When it comes to electrolyte imbalances with loop diuretics, they're always hypo. There's never enough. Now potassium sparing diuretics. This one, because it's keeping in our potassium, you want to make sure that they don't develop hyperkalemia. So an important tip for potassium sparing, you want to make sure that you encourage these patients to not take any salt substitutes. In salt substitutes that are like fake salt, they have a lot of potassium in them. That can also make someone become hyperkalemic because they're increasing their potassium and they're also keeping in so much potassium. So salt substitutes have a lot of those in them. And osmotic diuretics, basically useless but if someone has increased intracranial pressure, okay, I said that right, then you'd wanna use mannitol, which is an osmotic diuretic. And that's really the only thing I feel like you use that one for. So just remember, osmotic is taking out the water, 
all up in here, okay? Good. All right, guys, so I'm gonna end it here. I don't want it to be overload for you guys. Part two will be next week. So part two, we're gonna do diabetic drugs, psych drugs, which is so heavy. Uh, we're also going to do respiratory and then just some miscellaneous drugs as well. I hope that this video was useful for you guys. I hope that you guys take notes. If not, rewatch and take some notes. Uh, let me know what you guys think. God bless and good luck and keep living life from your favorite nurse.